gosh. The camera, I don't know if you guys can, can you see this? I need to point it. Look at him. Oh my gosh, I don't want to touch him because I don't want to bother him, but look at that precious baby boy. Oh my gosh. folks welcome this is gently chaotic knits and i am emily and there are some other things i normally say here about who i am and where i live and what this is this is a mostly knitting video podcast i live here in seattle washington with my husband nalkas and our pup norman norman is here as my emotional support couch partner today so we'll see how long he lasts probably less long if i touch him so maybe i'll try not to bother him too much um yeah i feel like there's there's some stuff to get through today uh before we go too far into the usual stuff like what i've been working on and other fun stuff. There's a couple things I want to address here at the beginning of the video. Um, hey folks, it is Emily from the future. I went to edit my video last night and I was really unhappy with this section so I wanted to re-record this morning to better represent my feelings. What I wanted to talk about is the Fringe Supply Co. Last episode, I and also a couple episodes uh, previously, I had talked about Fringe Supply Co. because I was sewing the field bag, which is a sewing pattern by Grainline Studio, but it's based off of the Fringe Supply Co. field bag, which is a really popular knitting bag that Fringe Supply Co. produced. And I mentioned in that episode last week that I didn't know why they closed. They actually shut down um, and stopped operating and stopped making bags. And I think that's in part why the sewing pattern was produced. And a commenter on last week's episode uh, let me know why it was, at least in part, why it was that they closed. The founder of the company, uh, before going on a trip to India, made some really insensitive and honestly like very alienating comments about that trip, about going to India, and it really started a conversation around the online knitting community about diversity and inclusion and about uh, racism. And to be honest with you, back when this happened, this was I think early 2019, maybe January 2019, I was not really super involved in the online knitting community. It wasn't until uh, 2020 when I started like mostly following knitting accounts on Instagram and those kinds of things. Before that, I was somewhat aware, but I, I really didn't know that this had happened. Um, and, and so I just, I didn't know about this. I, it never was my intent to just kind of gloss over it and not talk about something because it was like a negative thing. I always do my best and I will continue to do my best to address the things that I think need to be addressed, even if it's like a little bit of a downer. And so I'm really sorry that I, I missed this. Um, I really appreciate the commenter for bringing it to my attention so that I know about it now. I can say something now and I can also try to do a better job in the future. It's my worst fear that unintentionally, of course unintentionally, I would say something that would be hurtful or disrespectful to someone um, watching and I just... That is just like a fear that I have in producing the podcast and speaking publicly to you all. And I know that because I have a forum like this, there's also an obligation that I have to be a little more aware of those things. And I, I miss this. I made a mistake and I'm really sorry. And I, I want to do better. And so if you all notice that I'm talking about something that it seems like I'm missing something, I would love for you to just let me know um, in... For example, like when we, I had a little bit of a conversation about size inclusivity on here and I had a couple people reach out to me to continue that conversation and I was more than happy to talk about it with them a little more and I really appreciated hearing other folks' perspectives as well. So just keeping that in mind that I don't know, I don't know how best to say this. I, I think part of 
being a human and speaking for this long in a platform like this is that unfortunately like I probably won't be perfect and I, I try really hard to be I don't want th that to be an excuse I'm gonna try really hard to do my best but I appreciate y'all's help and I appreciate your understanding and I think that's pretty much it so back to the rest of the video so first thing I want to say is Thank you so much to everyone's support for Slanty Stripes. So the pattern was released last week and I could not be more thrilled by just the reception to it, y'all purchasing the pattern and sending me kind notes and messages and everything. Norman wants to come back. Come here. No. Okay. Everything, you all were just so kind about the website and about the drawing tool and about the pattern release and I saw some of you at La Mercerie at the reopening uh, at the new location this week. Come on! Um, and I'm just, I feel very full from all of that. I feel really happy and supported and good and so thank you all so much for that. Um, I have some other fun stuff upcoming. We have a testing call for a new pattern. So I unfortunately don't have the garment here physically with me because I ripped it out and uh, re-knit it. And my tech editor and friend and literal angel on this earth, Sylvan, is finishing up my sample for me right now. So I don't have it with me. But Dad's sweater is now open for testing. We're accepting test knit applications. I'm so excited. So. If you are a newsletter subscriber, to uh, you can subscribe on my website. You probably already received an email about the testing call, and hopefully you took a look and applied or didn't, uh, but you should have already gotten the link in your email inbox. If not, the link is going to be down in this video, and I also uh, will have the link on my Instagram as well. But you can find it in the description box of this video and I'm gonna leave the testing call open for a little while longer this time I think um, there are more sizes to fill so let me just step back and give you guys a little bit of information so this is dad sweater which is a pattern that I designed I'm gonna put pictures up and I'll there they may already be up I'm gonna just put some pictures up and switch them through while I talk about this so the pattern is called Dad Sweater. It is inspired by, you're trying to dig. Here you go. It is inspired by my dad's woolly wool Land's End set and sleeve sweaters that he wore when I was young. Um, and I guess still wears. I always say he wore when I was young, but he still wears them. And I uh, really fell in love with La Bien Aimé Cory Worsted uh, as the perfect yarn for this project. I think with the inspiration and the wool, it just came together to form like a really perfect, a perfect sweater that really satisfies kind of the inspiration that I had. So I, uh, I ended up to make sure that this uh, sweater would have good fit for different sized folks. Um, what I think of as like standard sizes for knitting patterns. So traditionally like women's sizes with that kind of shoulder to bust ratio circumference or whatever. And I also write, wrote a whole second size range for broad shoulder or like men's sizes. So we have lots more to test. Um, I know the knitting community is disproportionately women. So uh, anyone who is interested in knitting this pattern, let me know. Uh, you can apply to knit one for yourself. You can apply to knit one for someone else in your life. Um, I've already had folks reach out and say they want to knit them for their husbands, their boyfriends. Um, I'm going to need help with that to make sure that we get the broad shoulder size range tested as well. So uh, anyone who is interested please apply uh, the yarn I use like I mentioned is La Bien Aimé Cory Worsted and it's actually available now at La Mercerie the yarn store that I work at and if you're interested I know we have both the colors that I used uh, French gray is the color I used for my original sample so if you're seeing these pictures and you're like oh I like that color you can knit a matching sweater with me uh, French gray is that color and then I'm gonna share a little bit later the uh, sweater I'm knitting for my dad 
and that one I used Payne's Gray, which is a beautiful dark, like bluish gray. It's really beautiful. So, and then there's lots of other fun colors too. I'm already planning out the next ones I want to make, and everyone in my family wants one as well. So I'm gonna send them uh, the link so that they can tell me what colors they want and. Yeah, uh, I'm really, really excited about this one. This pattern feels really, really special to me. The inspiration is lovely. I think the sweater itself is just like really cozy and it feels like a hug. It feels really good to me and I am so excited to be sharing it with you all. So please apply to Testnet and if not, stay tuned for a pattern release later this fall like in a couple months. Um, I'll say here very quickly, it's gonna be an eight week test. So longer than any of my other tests before, we wanna make sure that we have plenty of time. Um, so eight week test, I'm gonna send out all the information and to selected testers and the pattern and everything on Monday. Monday, September 12th. So don't expect to hear from me before Monday, if you apply. Don't expect to hear from me before Monday. Uh, and that's it. All the other information about yardage and yarn and sizing and everything is in the application. And yeah, I will just say quickly, I'm going to just brag about my testing groups in the past, especially this most recent one. It's really fun. Uh, we're all kind of in a Slack channel together and the folks who have tested for me are just like so positive and supportive and it's just a really fun atmosphere that you get to meet these new folks and chat with them and work on the same project all at the same time. Of course, like I think they're great because they're testing for me, but they're also just all really good people. So please, uh, if you want to join us, I'd love for you to. And this will be a bigger one because we have more sizes. So it's going to be really fun. I can't wait and yeah, it's been like, are we at 15 minutes now? And I have not shown you any knitting. If anyone is still left here, I <laughs> applaud you because this is just not a great start. So I didn't take notes today. I feel chaotic. I feel like I, I really wanted to record today, but I had an appointment uh, like downtown this morning and then I'm trying to get stuff ready for the testing call and it's just, there's a lot going on. So I'm gonna try to, if y'all are okay with that, I'm gonna just take a second and take a little deep breath. And then I'm gonna talk to you about what I'm knitting and it's gonna be super casual. There's nothing new, I don't have any finished objects. I only have works in progress. And um, yeah, I've been pretty monogamous. I've been working, I've been focused. So I went through, I guess it's been over a week since I last recorded because even though I posted the video last Monday, I recorded it the Thursday before that. I don't know if this makes sense. Oh, just for those of you, today is Tuesday, September 6th is the day I'm recording, but this will likely be posted on Wednesday, September 7th. Well, definitely will be posted on Wednesday, September 7th. Okay. So... At the beginning of last week or whenever, I was not super motivated to knit. I don't know, I didn't feel knitting mojo. But the last couple days, like over the weekend, so starting on, really starting on Friday, last Friday, I really got like into it and was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cruise on this. I really need to make progress. So last time I showed you this, this is my dad's sweater for my dad. Last time I showed you this, I had just joined at the underarm. So basically, almost all the knitting I have to show you is right here, this, the body of this sweater. There's not a lot else. Um, it is pretty wide, and there are a lot of stitches on the needles here. So it takes me, I actually, I did the thing. Sometimes I feel better when I know exactly like how long it's gonna take me, how much I have left. And so what I did was, okay, well, let me, I'm, I should have expected this. My brain is not super sharp today. So we're kind of everywhere and I'm gonna try to rein it in and keep it focused and like 
logical in the way that we talk about things. That's the goal. Okay. First, this is my dad's sweater. That's the name of the pattern. It is for my dad. I am knitting up this sample for him. Uh, this is a new pattern and new design by me that I just talked about is about to start testing. The yarn I used is La Vienna May Cory Worsted and this is the color Payne's Gray. And I'll show you a close up of this color because how could I not? It's so good. Come on, there we go. It's like, I don't know. One of my friends was talking about how she thinks it's more blue and I see it as gray, but it's really just like a really good gray blue. So that's Payne's Gray. And I love the way that it's knitting up. It's just, there's like subtle variation in the yarn. If my camera would focus, that would be great. Right here. Come on, there we go. There's like subtle variation. I mean, it's pretty solid, but there is subtle variation in the yarn. And I think it makes just a beautiful depth of the color, the fabric, it's just, it's just beautiful. It's so good. So this is the broad shoulder size range. So like I talked about um, at the beginning when I was talking about my dad's sweater pattern and the testing, I wrote two size ranges, one for standard size or like women's sizes. And then this is the broad shoulder size, which is more like traditionally men's sizes. But you can honestly check your measurements and do whichever size you want, whatever. That's why I wanted to call it standard and broad shoulder because I think anyone can do whatever feels right to them. So this is standard size, or sorry, I'm gonna mix this up. Broad shoulder size four. And my original sample was a standard shoulder size two. So this is a 48 inch bust, which will give my dad, I think eight inches, maybe seven or eight inches of positive ease. It'll fit similarly to the sweater that he, that is based off of, um, that I have here. So I'm losing stitches here as is expected. Okay. So I, um, I think I talked about this a little bit last time about like this construction, but you knit the front and the back from, you cast on at the top of the back and then you knit the back and then you pick up on the shoulders and knit the right and left front and join them in the front here. And then you knit the front and then you join them at the underarm and then you're in the round the rest of the way. And it's great so that you can try it on and stuff. Um, it's not useful for me to try this on because this sweater is not for me, but if my dad were physically here, that would be fun and I could try this on him, but we're gonna just have to go off of the sweater I have that's his. Um, and yeah, I'm almost to the point where I'm gonna do the ribbing at the bottom. There is just a couple inches of one by one rib at the bottom. And then I will do, I have to pick up around here for the collar and I have to pick up around the armholes and do the sleeve. So it's a really nice wide sleeve with um, taper decreases. So it's a big sleeve most of the way through and then you do gradual decreases until the end you decrease more rapidly. So it's not quite like a balloon sleeve, I don't think, um, but it is definitely like a wide tapered at the end sleeve. It's a beautiful shape that I really love and I think it just really adds to the coziness of the sweater. So yeah, I started, um, I really was cruising on this. Uh, I, I started talking about this and then I got sidetracked. I really like to have um, an idea of like how much I have left, whether that be in like how many rows I have left or sometimes I'll even, uh, time how long it takes me to do one row and then I will calculate how much time I have left to do like that section. So I actually did that. It take, takes me uh, six and a half minutes to do a row of this, roughly. I mean, it changes a little bit based on like if I'm distracted, if I'm really cruising, that kind of thing. Uh, but it takes me six and a half and then I, the from the underarm, I have 14 inches to knit. And I'm actually at like, 
I'm close to 13 now. So I did measure that and I was like, okay, I've got like, I don't know, a lot of hours left in this. But it was great. I actually, um, Nafis and I went to see Hamilton, uh, the musical in Seattle at Paramount Theater on Sunday. And I took this with me and I knit so much on it. I probably knit like, I don't know, an inch and a half, maybe two inches, maybe during the musical. I knit the whole time and it was perfect. So uh, what I had been doing is each day I would move, I have this little fox stitch marker that I think I got, like progress keeper, that I think I got in like a Grenoey advent. I don't know if it will focus. It doesn't really matter what the stitch marker looks like. Just know that I have a little marker here that I was putting at the beginning of each day. So I'd wake up in the morning and I would move my progress keeper to where I was and then I would knit through the whole day and I could see, please focus, yes. Then I could see how much I knit in that day. So um, I got a lot more done. I think just being able to see my progress made me wanna do more. I just like felt the drive to get more done. So now I'm only about an inch away. Hopefully, maybe this evening, we have a fantasy football draft. So maybe like in between picks, I can get some knitting done. Or, I don't know. The problem is like, I want to knit all day, but I also have like all this computer stuff I have to do, like pattern stuff, preparation for test knitters, and <sighs> there's just always stuff to do. And like, I didn't do any work yesterday. I, I knit some yesterday, but I didn't do any work, like pattern work yesterday because it was Labor Day in the US and um, Marcus and I went to the baseball game and just did some other fun, it was like a weekend day for us. And so, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm having this feeling that I had when I was working for the Mariners that I thought was a symptom of working for the Mariners that I think may just be a symptom of being alive, or maybe it's just a symptom of me and the way that I operate but I always felt like I couldn't quite catch up and I told myself every week or every day like okay just get through this next part and then it's gonna slow down just get through this next part and then it'll ease up and then you can relax and it felt like I would get through one thing and there would always be another thing right after it and I know especially now with the pattern stuff and the design stuff and I had a great conversation with Jess, uh, the owner of La Mercerie, about this, that I know like a lot of that stuff is self-imposed. I know that I'm like imposing these deadlines on myself and I can like take a step back and relax some. And part of me like really wants to do that, but I also am just like so excited about this stuff and I feel like I know what I'm capable of and I want to keep pushing. Um, but I am starting to have that feeling again that's like, okay, next week is going to be more relaxed. Next week is going to be, I uh, can let up next week. And it just is not coming. It's not coming. But I, I don't know. I'm going to sound crazy right now, but I really do feel like next week things are going to be better. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. We've got, um, we've got some time before our next travel. I feel like that has made this year a little bit more hectic as well. We've been gone on the weekends a lot and we've been traveling and September is mostly empty from travel and visitors. It's just going to be us hanging out, watching football and, um, and knitting. So hopefully, hopefully that kind of like one thing after another feeling will go away. That's my hope. But I do still feel that a little bit now. And I wish I had more time to knit. But I'm going to make time for it. I'm going to try to take some time to make sure to relax and knit. And this project has been perfect for that. It's really relaxing knit. There's not a ton, especially now that I'm in the body, there's not, I don't have to pay attention to anything. I just knit, 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 knit. And then once I get to the ribbing, I'll do the ribbing, do a lovely tubular bind off. And then I get to do some fun stuff with sleeves and the collar. And it'll really, I think, take shape once I get those things on there. So 
I'm excited about that and hopeful that I'll have more time to sit down and knit in the next couple of weeks and get this done because I really need to get it done because remember y'all I talked to you about my knitting plans oh my gosh I need to cast on my Rhinebeck sweater if you don't know what I'm talking about my friends and I are going to Rhinebeck for the first time this year and we are all knitting matching tees or like tanks and also matching sweaters and so by matching I mean the yarn is the same but the pattern is not necessarily so I had this idea that I really wanted to knit this, well first I wanted to knit the Wayne by Sari Nordlin, but I had some issues with that that I talked about last time. But she started teasing a new sweater and I was talking about having the test call pretty soon and I was like maybe I can wait for that, like maybe if I get picked to test it I can test that and that could be my Rhinebeck sweater. And the testing call hasn't come yet. Sorry, has been so nice. I've talked to her, I've messaged her about it and she's been really responsive to my questions. And I just don't know if I'm gonna have enough time to do it or not from when the, from when the testing call happens. So, I don't know, I'm really, I'm feeling very torn about what to do. But I have been telling myself that as long as I still have this sweater, which I have to finish, I can just focus all my energy on this and then I can worry about the Rhinebeck sweater as soon as this one's done. And then I can just switch over and focus all my attention on that. I actually, I don't know if I should share this, maybe this is too personal about the inside of my mind, but I did wake up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night at 4.45 this morning and I couldn't fall back asleep for like an hour and a half, maybe two hours because I couldn't stop thinking about like all the stuff. The Rhinebeck sweater and we also, I think we have like some sort of rodent or something living in our attic. We talked to our landlord about it and they're gonna come and check it out soon but like I heard this like scurrying, I don't know. And then so then I, I, I get up to go pee and I try to go back to sleep and then I can't go back to sleep so I come out into the living room so I don't bother an office and I'm like searching about like what's living in my attic <laughs> at like four in the morning. Oh my gosh. So I'm a little, I'm a little tired and I'm a little out of it today and that is why because I couldn't sleep for like two hours in the middle of the night because of a variety of reasons. Um, so yes, that, that is my dad's sweater. I have one other work in progress. And oh my gosh, the camera, I don't know if you guys can, can you see this? I need to point it. Look at him. Oh my gosh, I don't want to touch him because I don't want to bother him. But look at that precious baby boy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Truly, what an angel. Okay, I don't think that's right. I need to go a little higher. Is that better? I don't know. Y'all know that I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. I'm about to get cut off, so let me switch it. Okay, I'm back. So, I was going to show you my other work in progress that I have, which I really don't want to bother Norman. So I'm going to try to sneakily... I just bring the whole bag. Okay. Alright. Um... Let me get this out. Okay, this is my other work in progress. I cast this on a week, maybe two weeks ago, because I was going to a Mariners game and I wanted, excuse me, I wanted a small project to take into the ballpark with me to knit on while I was there. Actually, I didn't end up taking it to that game, but I've been to two Mariners games since then and I've taken it to those two games and so the only time I've worked on this has been inside of T-Mobile Park has been at the Mariners game so this how fun is this is this not like the most fun thing this yarn is so delightful so if you don't remember from last time let me tell you about this yarn this is Ovis Etc this is Igne which is the fingering weight base that we carry at uh, La Mercerie. It is a wool, silk, and rainy 
blend, and Raimi is a lovely plant fiber. So it has really nice um, stretch and toughness and great feel. It's a perfect sock yarn. I really like it, especially for someone who doesn't want nylon or like something artificial in your yarn, in your sock yarn. I think this is a really great yarn. Um, and we have the yarn that we got from them, the palette was just so beautiful. Y'all may remember if you've watched my podcast for a while, I loved this yarn so much. I bought it in several colors. We also have a sport weight base at La Mercerie, which is just the wool and Raimi. I love it. I love the colors, but I got one skein of this colorway. It's called Confetti Pine and Pink, and it's a green base with little pink speckles in it. It just has these little dots of pink and it knits up like this. Like how fun is that? It's just like a little polka dotted sock. It's so fun. I love it. And it's knitting up so quickly. I actually have it on. I switched it to wooden needles because I'm so paranoid about like going to the stadium and one time they tried to not let me bring my needles in, my metal knitting needles into the ballpark. And at the time I worked for the team and I was like, here's my badge, I'm allowed to bring this in. And they're like, okay, fine. But now if I go, I don't work for the team anymore. So I'm nervous and I haven't had issues most times, but I switched to wooden needles just to make sure because I think technically it's like there's they make the stuff you can't bring in to the ballpark really broad so that like, I think so that if they, you know, they can use their judgment on like what's unsafe and they can say like, look here, you can't include it because this, um, but there's something that says like metal tools, but there's nothing that says wooden tools and it doesn't say knitting needles specifically you can't bring in. So anyway, I switched it to wooden needles and I really like metal needles better, but this is fine. Okay. What am I talking about? I talked about the yarn. This is just a simple vanilla sock. I'm not using a pattern. I'm just going off of what I like in my socks. I did 56 stitches on a US size zero. My sock gauge for some reason is really loose. And so I have to do that a really small needle and really few stitches to get a sock that fits me. I also have really skinny feet. So that is why I have to do that. And uh, I just did a two by two rib at the top for I think like 15 rows and then I'm just doing stockinette. I did the heel at the game yesterday. I did a slip stitch heel um, and I'm doing the gusset now. And it's just cruising and it's really nice. It's a great project to just toss in my bag. Like I had it in my purse. I don't, my purse is down here now. I just tossed it in my purse like I had an appointment this morning I had to go to and I just tossed my little sock project in my purse. So I have not worked on this inside of my house because if I'm in my house, I'm working on this because I gotta get this done. This has no deadline. So this is just if there's somewhere I'm going that I, like basically I've only worked on this at the ballpark, but I, I have carried this with me. I haven't actually worked on it, but I have carried it with me when I want, like when I'm, you know, just carrying a smaller purse and I don't have room for my larger project. So yeah, that's, that's really, unfortunately that's all I've been working on. I feel like this is really boring, not fun knitting updates, but I'm really trying to focus and get these things done. Um, and yeah, I also, I don't have any yarn acquisitions. I have a couple of fabric things that I wanted. Oh, I do, sorry. I don't have a yarn acquisition for myself, but I do have a yarn acquisition for someone else. So why don't I share that now? I'm sorry for the crinkling. So I ordered, so um, I talked before on the podcast here about Sylvan, who is just, the best tech editor and friend. Sorry, I don't know if you guys can hear me over this. Let me just do that. With it. Okay, done. Sylvan is the best tech editor and friend and anything that anyone could ask for. And um, as a gift of thanks for her, all the work that she does to help me out with the patterns and everything, 
um, I got her some yarn. And this was a set that she had picked out that she wanted to use for the slanty stripes. So if you need inspiration for slanty stripes, you should definitely check out this yarn dyer. I actually wasn't familiar with her yarn before. This is from Moon Glow Yarn Co. And it is the Summer Sidewalk Sock Set, which is so fun. Don't these colors look like sidewalk chalk? I loved it as soon as I saw it, and I think it'll make a perfect slanty stripe. So it actually has six contrast colors instead of five, which my original sample has five, but you can do it with six, you can do it with however many you want. And this beautiful gray as the main color. And I think it's gonna be just beautiful. And um, Whitney of Moon Glow Yarn Co. left such a nice note on the packing slip. So hi Whitney, thank you so much for watching the podcast and for your nice note. And I love this yarn, I love your yarn. So um, yeah, this is gonna be heading to Sylvan and she's planning to make a slanty stripes with it and I can't wait to see it. I think it'll be really beautiful. So that is the only yarn acquisition that I have. Uh, but I also got some fabric. So I talked last time, um, I have been, I, I sewed up that project bag so quickly. And um, after that, I think I mentioned this on my last podcast that a couple of my, uh, so I'm, I'm planning to make a couple more. Um, one actually also for Sylvan and one for another friend of mine. And so I had ordered the fabric for their bags and the fabric came. So I wanted to show those, especially because I think I was trying to describe the colors last time and I feel like I did a really bad job of describing them. So this one, I don't know if you guys can see this color super well. It is just like a beautiful, I think the color I was trying, the, the word I was trying to think of last week that I couldn't think of was burgundy. That is, I think, the color of this. But it's a lovely waxed canvas and it's from, I think it's pronounced Clum House, Clum House, one of those. Um, and it's a little thicker than the wax canvas that I used for my original bag, but I think it will give it, I, I actually wanted that. I wanted something a little bit thicker so that it would stand up, the sides would stand up a little bit better. But yeah, this is for Sylvan's bag. And then I also got, the, this is, oh, I already said where it's from, sorry. Then I did an order from Blackbird Fabrics and I got this green, I think it's called Military Green. So it's very much um, that kind of dark, olive military green. Um, and this is also wax canvas. Uh, Blackbird carries just a couple colors of wax canvas, and this was exactly the color my friend was wanting, was this um, military green color. So uh, this one is also a little thicker. I don't know if it says here how thick it is. I don't remember but I got this as well. So my plan is, I'm hoping maybe on Friday, I can take some time to cut out the fabric and then I can sew the bags up for my friends. Um, but since I was placing an order with Blackbird, I got a couple other things as well because I'm planning to, I'm pla I, have, I have sewing plans. I actually have some sewing plans. So one thing, oh, I actually got this from Clune House. I think they had their zippers were on sale and I really want to make a zippered project bag. And my friend Maya is, we are gonna have a little sewing day where she teaches me how to do things that I don't know how to do, which is very needed. Cause I just, I don't know. Do you ever feel like this when you start out a new hobby or a new craft that like, you just want someone who knows what they're doing to tell you all the things. I feel like I really need that. So I'm going to go do some sewing with Maya and she's going to tell me all the things. But one thing we're going to do is I really wanted to try quilting and rather than starting a whole big quilt project, um, I'm going to try just sewing up a quilted bag and I'm going to also try doing a zipper because I've never done a zipper before. So. I got this, it's just like a plain black YKK zipper from Clum House. Clum House, I don't know. I also got another zipper because I'm planning to make a half circle skirt and I think I'm ready to try that with a zipper as well. So I think I showed this fabric on the podcast before but I don't remember and I guess I could have brought it up and shown it today but I didn't do that. Uh, but I am planning to make a half circle skirt, like at a midi length with this, it's like a, 
rusty orange color ditzy floral so it has like little tiny white flowers all over it and I have this image in my head of this perfect outfit do you guys ever do that like before you make something like when you're knitting something or sewing something you like think about the perfect outfit that you want to wear with it I definitely do that all the time and sometimes I have multiple perfect outfits for like a finished garment um but for this one I really want to sew this skirt and I have this idea about a like neutral beigey colored summer top like a new design that I tried to knit this last year and then didn't really work with the yarn I picked out and I have new yarn now and anyway I have this whole thing but I want to knit this it's like a deep V tank top and I want to wear it with this orange floral skirt and Nafis and I are going on vacation in November to a warm and tropical location and I have this image in my head of this outfit and I really want to wear it there so I need to learn how to do zippers so that I can do a skirt that's not elastic waistband and hopefully Maya can help me teach me how to do this so I have some zippers but I also in my blackboard bird order one I got well, I got some thread to match the fabric but I also got these labels and at Blackbird, they had so many label options online. I was really impressed with their label selection. But these are little houseplant labels. Let me show them. I don't know if you can, you'll be able to see them super well. I don't know if this will focus. But I wanted to show you, please. Yeah, there we go. So they're like little pink labels that have different little houseplants on them. I don't know. I wish it would shake a little there's like a monstera in here that's really cute yeah there the that one so cute anyway i really wanted to get these one because if you have watched the podcast you know i'm a big houseplant person um if you could just see over here sorry please focus please please i know i need to sit closer but i really like having a little bit of background I don't know anyway uh, I'm a big houseplant person and so I thought these would be really cute and also the friend I'm making um, one of the bags for the green bag is also a really big houseplant person and so I thought I could put a cute little houseplant plant label in on the inside of her bag and that that would be like a really sweet I would make it a little bit more special I thought so I got those and I also got some other fabric because of course um, I fell in love with this stripe pattern and you can tell I guess I didn't even plan this this is my favorite stripe shirt but I love stripes and I have never sewn with knits before and it's scary to me and I don't know how to do it but I love this fabric so much that I was like I have to have it and then it'll be like dream sewing you know I'll I'll have it and then I can get better and then once I'm good enough to do knits I can sew this but it's a beautiful thin stripe pattern it has my perfect colors on it it's like primary colors plus like an extra blue and a pink it's perfect I love it so I got this fabric too and that is my acquisitions segment I still have not been buying much yarn I don't know maybe it's because I'm gearing up to go to Rhinebeck in October and I just like know I'm gonna spend so much money on yarn there maybe that's why subconsciously I'm not buying as much yarn but I don't know um I haven't been so yeah I think that's pretty much it for crafting stuff I'm trying to think if I forgot something I probably did because I didn't write anything down today and I don't know that my mind is in the best state for memory considering I'm tired and emotional today so hopefully I said the important stuff dad sweater test call and I appreciate all of you for everything always that's pretty much the, those are the takeaways those are the only things we need to remember from this video. Uh, okay. Life stuff. 
I, I, we've made some good food since I last spoke with you that I want to share. Um, I'm trying to remember everything we did. So we did a brunch. Well, did we make brunch last week as well? I see this is why I need to write it down. Those of you that don't know, that haven't been watching, I almost always, my husband and I almost always make Sunday brunch. We make brunch for together on Sundays and then we eat it. <laughs> and then we do our the rest of our day. But we did brunch this week on a Monday. So we did it yesterday because it was Labor Day and I made lemon cardamom rolls. It was a New York Times recipe and they were really good. I originally, actually, I really wanted to make what I call fall rolls. It's basically cinnamon rolls, but you use pumpkin pie spice in place of cinnamon. So it's a little bit more of like a fall seasoned flavor. It's got like, you know, all spice and clove and nutmeg and stuff in it. Um, because like I talked about before, I really, I'm conflicted. I want fall, but I also, and clinging desperately to summer. So I can't, I don't know. I started out this week and I was like, I'm gonna make fall rolls. It's gonna be a great transition to fall. And then last second I was like, nope, Emily, it's not time to let go yet. You need to make lemon instead because that's summer. I don't know, that felt summer to me. So I made lemon rolls and they were tasty and I'm glad that I did lemon because it's still, I'm still, I'm still doing summer for another like week or so. I think everyone else is ready and is like moving on to fall and I'm not quite there yet. I think it's, I think it still needs to be summer. Um, so yeah, we made lemon rolls. Nafis made the most delicious egg bake. It was so good. It had um, like sausage and onions and tomatoes and eggs and cheese and it was so tasty. It had like a nice runny yolk. So good. So we did that. Um, other things we made this week. I'm trying to remember if there's anything noteworthy aside from just like our usual dinner stuff. We did go out to dinner to celebrate my pattern release and some really fun work stuff for both myself and office and we went to this new Italian restaurant that we'd never been to before called La Spiga in Seattle and it was really tasty. I got a pesto cream gnocchi and office got it was like a mushroom sausage uh, ravioli. Really good. And we also got this plate that had like prosciutto and burrata and peach and balsamic glaze and arugula and it was just really tasty. Um, I'm trying to think about, why do why can't I remember if we made, I guess I can look, I normally write down the food we make. So I can look in my, this is my planner. Um, okay. Did we make brunch last week. No, we didn't. We did go to um, Jess, the owner of La Mercerie. Uh, we had like a little team dinner at her house and we had, she made sourdough pizza. It was so good. It was really good. But the toppings were really good too. She did some really fun toppings. One was like goat cheese and corn, which like I never would have thought of, but it was so good. And there was like a fig and prosciutto. It was just very tasty and that was a very fun time too, to just hang out with the team. Uh, yeah, okay. What am I, I feel like, I don't know, maybe that's all I have to say about food stuff, but other stuff we've been up to, I mentioned, so it was a, well that was, okay, last weekend we went to Jess's on Saturday for pizza dinner. And that was in preparation for La Mercerie's reopening at the new location in Winslow. And that happened on Thursday. And it was so much fun. So many people came. And if you're in the area, if you're in the Seattle area, you should definitely come by. It's a beautiful location. And it's just so much fun there. And we're going to start doing, on Saturday, we're going to start doing Saturday craft afternoons. So you can come and hang out and knit with us. And we'll be there. And we can chat. And help you with your yarn or whatever. It's just going to be so much fun. So that was La Mercerie opening. And then, um, why don't I just open this so I can remember everything I did because I have to write it all down. 
Um, we did Slanty Stripes release this week, which I talked about a little bit. Then it was my dad's birthday on Friday and I missed him. He was actually in Switzerland, but I worked on his sweater a lot that day. Um, Malthus and I played around with Gloomhaven, which if you're big board game people, you will know. It is a very involved board game that normally takes a couple hours and we play it maybe once a month, just the two of us. Then on uh, Sunday, we I talked about how we went to Hamilton. We went to a new park near our house and that we hadn't been to and we just kind of walked around and it was really cool. We found like a swing set and we just like hung out on the swings for a while and there were some trails nearby that we walked. It was really fun. It's crazy how close it is to us and we had never been there before. So we just did a little exploring on Sunday and it was really nice. And then we went to Hamilton in the evening and then Labor Day, uh, Monday, yesterday, we went to the Mariners game. The Mariners unfortunately lost and it was a close one. It seemed like they might do it and they might come back in the ninth inning, but they didn't quite do it. So but that was really fun. And then tonight... We have a fantasy football draft. So we play, and my husband and I play together on the same team in a league with my family. So we play with, um, like, my parents and siblings and grandparents. Malthus's parents actually play in the league with us as well. And really fun. Um, so we're really excited for that. The draft is going to be tonight. Malthus may actually be in a meeting for part of that, which is bad news for our team if I'm in charge because... He tends to be better at this than I am. I know I was actually a professional analyst for a sports team, but it was baseball, not football. So um, totally different thing. I'm pretty good. I, I actually uh, performed quite well when I played in the Mariners front office fantasy football league. I came in the top two or three, I think every year that I played. So I, I was successful on my own, but... I feel more comfortable with him there to support. So, um, so we'll see how that goes. Hopefully that will be fun and we'll be happy with our team at the end. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, that's what we've been up to. We're, I, I had this conversation with Knox and I was like, okay, let's make a list of all the things we want to do before summer's over. And like, my list in my head is like 40 things long and we have like maybe at best like one more week maybe two I don't like I think everyone else thinks that it's fall already and I'm like trying to squeeze in weeks worth of things into the little bit of good weather that we have left so wish me luck um doing all of summer in the last week it's mostly just like food that I want to cook and like things that I loved about the summer that I want to do one more time, you know, like before it's over. So like, I want to go to Pike Place Market again and like get another Dole Whip float from Rachel, Rachel's ginger beer. Like I want to do that one more time before summer is over, before it gets too cold for me to want that. Or like, I want to make sourdough pizza and sit outside on our deck and eat dinner. Like I want to do that one more time before dinner is over or before summer is over. Um, so we'll see how much of that we can fit in, but that's pretty much it. I really appreciate you all listening. I know this was a little bit of a weirder episode. I only talked about knitting for a little bit of it and a lot of it was about other stuff, but y'all support means so much to me. I forgot to talk about this at the beginning of the episode, but we just passed the two year anniversary of me starting this podcast. I've been doing this. I've been talking about my knitting and my projects online and sharing it with you all for two years now is that wild to anyone else that's wild to me and I just it doesn't feel like it's been that long but it also feels like it's been longer if that makes any sense and I'm just so so grateful for the community here um and for y'all support and kindness truly um it really means a lot to me and I'm excited to move forward there's fun stuff ahead uh, we're moving into peak knitting season into the fall. I am still, of course, clinging to summer, but I think there's a lot to look forward to. And I'm just excited, excited to share much of it with you all as well. So, Dad's Sweater Test Call, if you're interested. And that's pretty much it.
So I hope you do lots of knitting and watch lots of baseball and have a great week. Bye.